welcome back. You know, uh, my video today was supposed to be putting the firewall, um, the master cylinder on the firewall, you know, right here. Remember I showed you the last video and uh, guess what? Back order. Really? I need it now. But I'm going to do another video. I'm going to do my most favorite um, fabrication tools. So come on over here to my desk. And I'm just going to go down the list and show you some of the, my most favorite tools and why I think they're important and why I think that you should have them. So the number one, I guess, number one tool that I use the most is what's called an alignment punch. They come in a set of like 29. They're like under 10 bucks. And one side has a point on it. The other side is for hammering. And... Um, so what you do is like, let's say I had this steering column bracket here and I wanted to mark the holes because I wanted to bolt it to a bracket, something like that. So I'd find the punch, just kind of eyeballing here to see, and, yep, look at there, I got it right on the first deal. <laughs> anyway, you slide it in, hit it with a hammer, more to the other side, tap it with a hammer. When you remove it, you'd have two little indentations where it goes. And then I would just grab a center punch and make it a pretty good size, you know, mark so that I could drill it out on the drill press. And hit to the drill press, drill it out, boom, fits perfect. No more guessing. Um, these things are so handy. I, I really think this is a pretty handy tool. This guy here, you've probably seen pictures of him, wondered what it was. It's a gauge for sheet metal and metal thickness. It allows you to really quickly take a piece of metal, whatever it might be, and if you want to know the thickness of it, you just find the place where it fits really nice, and 21 gauge. Now if I'm making a patch panel for my truck, say for example, let's say I wanted to fill this hole over here up, which I probably will anyway, and I was curious, gosh, I wonder what size metal I need for that. So I take my gauge, I come over here, you just kind of do a little test fit until it fits in there, and look at there, 18 gauge. So now I can go to the metal shop, get some 18 gauge steel, cut it out, and I know that the thickness will match on both sides, so it'll be a perfect, perfect fit. So really handy tool, not very expensive. Uh, one side of it tells you your gauges, and the other side of it tells you your decimal equivalent. So really handy not very much money got to have one adjustable square um, this is not cheap however but i recommend that you get a quality square this one's made by starrett um, the scale is really easy to read and i need all the help i can get as i get older my eyes just aren't what they used to be and this is super easy to read it's kind of got a matte finish and it laser etched or something and it's it's just nice, okay? And what's good for, with this is, number one, you know that if you put it against something, it's dead square, okay? I use it for doing layouts when I am uh, making, you know, like this was a engine block adapter plate that I made. I made it out of cardboard first, and then when I got to transfer it to steel, I used the square on the steel and then a metal scribe. It's got a tungsten carbide point on it and you can, it'll mark a really nice mark in the metal. Shows up really easy so you can cut to it. This guy here, it's made by General. Um, it's a contour gauge <laughs> and uh, you want to find out the contour on something and you just push it up against it. It'll give you your contour and then you can transfer it to your piece of material that you wanted to copy, say a frame corner or something like that for like a motor mount tab. This would mimic the deal. You could come over to your piece of metal, trace it off, and then after you've shaped your metal, you'll know that it's going to fit because you've got the exact shape off of this deal. And then when you're done with it, you just straighten it out. So really handy. I don't think it's more than 10 bucks. Obviously Sharpies, a black Sharpie and a silver Sharpie, depending on the color of the material, like this stuff with the, uh, the darker color steel, it has a mill scale on it. I probably use the silver for marking. 
And if it was, um, um, you know, bare steel, I would use the black Sharpie. This guy here is called a deburring tool. And uh, I had a machinist friend of mine introduce this to me and this thing rocks, okay? So let's say you have a piece of steel, like, I don't know if I can see if I can show it here. It has a little bit of an edge to it. You know, let's say you just cut it or whatever. So you put it in your vise, put your gauge on there and you just, and it rounds off the edge. This thing is super handy. You bore a hole in a piece of material and then you want to, round over the edge a little bit you just roll it around in there and you can do both inside and outside with it this thing is under 10 bucks and it's i store extra tips in the bottom of it and they make a whole bunch of different kind of tips but this is the most um, standard tip for deburring sheet metal deburring holes whatnot really handy tool this it's so simple that you gotta have it it's a drill gauge, okay? So, let me, you know, you got a bolt, whatever the size bolt is, or a pin, like here's a pin here. And I go, gosh, what size hole do I need for that? So you just come over here, your gauge really quickly, and you go, oh, 5 sixteenths. Handy, really handy. You got a bolt and you wanna find out what size hole you need, same idea. Oh, I need a 3 eighths. Really handy tool, doesn't cost much money. Everybody should have one. An adjustable, um, gosh, what do they call these? I guess an adjustable angle finder. Okay, mostly people use them in woodworking, but I use it in metalworking a lot. And um, it allows me to find the angle on something. You know, like uh, I want to find out what the exhaust manifold angle is for the exhaust pipe, and I'm going to build an exhaust system. So I kind of lay this part on the frame and, and figure out where I want it and then tighten this little wing nut and I can go over to the chop saw, transfer that angle to the piece of material that I want and I know the angle is going to match and everything's going to work. Really handy little tool. Get the bigger ones. They make little ones and big ones. The big one's nice because it goes like on this frame here. If you're doing something, you get the bigger one and it allows you to go to cover the whole thing, especially when you're doing an angle. If you get the short one, you know, it ends about here and you really want it to go the full length. So get the longer one. It's really handy. I love it. And again, it's not very expensive. I think Home Depot, 12 bucks or something. This is a cool tool. Let me show you this. All right, so let's say that uh, you're just gonna drill a hole in some sheet metal and you find that little piece of metal that I had here. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I got a piece of, this is a piece of aluminum. I don't know what size it is. Hey, let's take my gauge and find out what size it is. 16 gauge aluminum. All right, so put this in here. I'm gonna drill a 3 16 hole. Hey, I wonder what size this is. Take my drill gauge right here and I just find it and I keep trying until it, oh look, it's 3 16 Pretty handy tool. Okay, so let's drill a hole in here. Hope it's sharp enough. Probably pick the only dull drill bit in the box. Okay, so we drill a hole in there. A nice hole. However, on the back side, it's got a bunch of metal, you know, blowout and burrs and whatnot, and I don't know. It's just time consuming. So, you need one of these. It's a sheet metal hole punch. It works awesome. I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't very expensive. So here's the one I drilled, and you saw how long that took with a eh, kind of a dull bit. So, and this is my sheet metal punch, and look at that. No burrs, super clean, ready to go. You know, if you're making like, um, like dash panels and things that, you know, you want to attach to something and you want it nice and clean and quick, Mark your holes. This, uh, the, um, I guess that would be called the, the punch part. It has a little uh, lineup hole on it. So if you had a center punch, you could line it up and get the hole exactly where you marked it on your piece of material and punch the hole. It also has an adjustment here for depth. 
So if you're doing a whole bunch of holes, like let's say you're doing a patch panel and you want to um, do some plug welds, okay? You can change and go to a bigger anvil, like this is quarter inch. And you can punch all of the holes, set your distance, and you go right along the piece of sheet metal, punch all your holes, and you're all ready to go for doing your patch panel. So I like this tool a lot. I use it a lot. Um, and it's not very expensive. It's even made in Taiwan. So, But you know what? For what it does, it does a fine job. This, this thing here, I got this at Harbor Freight, right? It's a hollow punch set. And uh, I use it for when I'm making my templates, okay? This was uh, a bracket for, uh, for my motor. And um, I cut it out of the cardboard, punched the holes that I needed so that I could actually bolt this piece of cardboard up to the motor. In fact, it went right over here. Let me show you. You bolt it to the motor like this, and it was a standoff bracket I made for doing my motor install. And, and I'll, I'll show you that bracket on another video. It, um, it's really easy to make, and um, gosh, it, it made all the difference in the world locating the motor and the, tranny, and the transmission in here, because I could raise and lower the engine, I could move it back and forth, and uh, it's fully supported it, and it allowed me to really to make the motor mounts. And, uh, you know, hanging it off a cherry picker, that works, but it just rocks and moves around. And this bracket that I built um, worked awesome. Anyway, I make them out of cardboard, and I get these off the back of notebooks. So, you know, I like to use everything. So I take this piece of cardboard off the back of these notebooks, cut my template out, trace it on, you know, with a pencil, cut it, do all the adjustments with a pair of scissors, punch the holes where I needed them. Once I'm happy with it, then I just transfer this to a piece of steel. So um, these transfer punches are really nice. I tried in the past, um, you know, poking a hole and cutting it with a pair of scissors and it just wasn't accurate enough. It, it, you know, you need a nice accurate hole so that when you actually build it out of steel, it fits. So. These, uh, these punches are really handy. All right, well, that kind of wraps up my favorite fabrication tools. I got more tools to show you down the road, but uh, those are my favorite five or six. I can't remember how many it was. Uh, listen, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like my video. Um, subscribe. I got more videos coming. That way you'll know when they, uh, when they come out. And uh, leave me some comments. I'd love to hear from you if you got any ideas or maybe I didn't answer a question for you, please leave a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Till next time, Idaho Fabricator. See ya.